the blind side, Solomé tackled by Joe Roth and a foot in touch from the supporting player, Brinza. But again, when we've seen some enterprise from Romania and no little skill. Absolutely, when, when they do get the ball, they do look exciting. Great skill has been shown and, uh, I mean, that was a good little bit of play. He steps inside, Finnegan comes in to make the tackle and uh, he slips out, but uh, obviously the Australians are strong defensively, but you've got to be uh, impressed by the way that uh, Romania have attacked them constantly throughout the game when they have had possession. And when they do keep possession, they look very good. They've actually managed to penetrate the Australian defence uh, more than the All Blacks did in Stadium Australia at the end of August. I know maybe a, you know, a different intensity about that match than there is about this one here, but nevertheless, they've been impressive in that department. New South Wales front row of Richard Harry, Phil Kearns and Andrew Blades. And uh, all three of those front row forwards are now 32 years of age, so they, they do have tremendous experience in that particular department, Gwyn. How important is that? Vital, I think, especially in that area of the field. It's difficult for youngsters to come into the front row of international rugby, not just international rugby, but you know the southern hemisphere stuff where really the mature men probably do best, and um, you have to learn your trade in that front row. It's not easy and it's not always pretty, but that extra age of experience gives them a great boost. Slozariuk is replaced by Chiriak. Daniel Chiriak plays for Farul Constanta, who wins his third cap. Chiriak, who started against the Scots in August. Jeremy Paul to Giffen. That's a good drive by uh, the Australian packer Richard Harry there off loading the ball. Now Gregan for Roth and Horan to chase. <laughs> the crowd seemed to enjoy that decision great like driving line from Australia they seem to look better in the lineup when they just keep it crisp and simple and when there's a bit of pace in the throw and the jump just goes straight up and everyone uh, collects around the jumper but uh, they've been very keen to try all the variations possible in the lineup and they haven't carried out their threat Rod McQueen was talking about the Australian forwards wearing Stanley Matthews shorts this uh, strange IRB rule about uh, lifting in the lineup you mustn't touch the legs only the shorts we were looking forward to see those uh, rather long, old-fashioned uh, shorts to see how they'd look in the in the green and gold. Well, they would have had to play the match in black and white. Balan Brinza takes it. Looked like he shoveled it forward there, but referee says play on in close contact. Brinza with his hands on the ball. You can see the all-black uh, coaching influence here as Petras goes for the line. Five metres short, and Romania, no doubt about it, they deserve a try. Busek on Tiniak. Took a good tackle from Kefu there to stop the Romanian centre. And they're still going. And Australia have robbed it. And a touch forward. And a little bit of relief in the Wallaby camp. But again, some resolute and aggressive forward play from the Romanians. Determined to get a try in this game. Yes, they kept the ball very tight here for the first time all game. And uh, tried smashing over the line with their big men running close to the rack more. But uh, this Aussie defence is something special. They would be disappointed if they conceded a try, I feel, to the opposition of uh, Romania having defended so well throughout the Super, the super 12 play, play, uh, period and Tri-Nations especially but uh, in all fairness uh, Romania probably have deserved a try they have cut and penetrated the defence of Australia several times so um, let's hope they do get one before the end of the night Time to ask you 
Uh, I think, Gwen, how you feel Ireland will be feeling watching this tonight? Well, certainly they feel that they can attack the Australians because we've seen um, the Romanians who, on, a, on the island, will feel that if they do get some possession, they do take on the Australians. They will be able to rattle them, and you never know with that crowd in Dublin getting behind the Irish, and there's always a chance, especially what we saw in the last World Cup being played there. Oh, rattling's our speciality. <laughs> Yeah, I've been rattled there a couple of times. <laughs> Ireland Australia, of course, the uh, next game in this group. Lansdowne Road, live on British Eurosport, of course. Now, Viriano loves to run. I'll tell you what, he's going absolutely sideways, grabbing, but it's worked pretty well. Brezzo Eanu, across comes Tim Horan. Well, usually when you see players doing that, coaches scream at them, what are you doing? But it wasn't a bad ploy in the end. Exactly, he was looking for the scissors, but uh, in the end, the other winger looped around beautifully and uh, put a great chip in, and the good thing about the chip was it stayed in the field of play. Horan forced to retrieve it. He is so good in defence. Kept that scrummage together a bit better. Dragoianu just across the game line. That's important. Me too. Again, it's another fine drive for obstruction. And a penalty to Australia, which is a pity. It is a pity, but uh, I think they're resorting to the older American football tactics there. Uh, blocking in front of the runner, but... Um, they're giving it everything, they're piling into Rucks and Malls, desperate to score, and I think you'll see here, the number six in front, just clearing the path for his prop, but uh, that's a penalty. And usually at this stage, you know, when they, the, the, the powerful opposition have scored quite a few tries, it's when you see teams collapse, Romania are having possibly their best spell of the match. They're showing great spirit, and they're very uh, courageous, creative, and adventurous, and that really has to be applauded, because... What does ha tend to happen in games like this when one side is so much better than the other is that the uh, struggling team does kill the ball, slow it down, try to create a negative environment. But that hasn't happened here tonight. That's John Phillips and uh, Mircea Parashiv. The coaching team have done a good job here. Giffen. Giffen, Giffen. Regan to the tugboat, and there's a bit of room here now for Matt Burke. He's got little outside, now inside. Could do well to change direction here, Australia. A lot of golden jerseys to the left. Romanians now reforming their defence. And it's Owen Finnegan, though, finding a way through. John Ailes, beautiful hands from John Ailes, and Jeremy Paul for the corner gets there. Must be why they call him nobody's. Yes, we haven't seen much of him in the loose, it has to be said, but uh, when he does pop up, he's very effective. Good run by Finnegan. Tackling is a little bit uh, weak at this stage. Shows the ball, and then a little pass. And as the hands come through, puts the ball behind, and uh, good pace from the hooker. Jeremy Paul fights them off, reaches with one hand, right down, puts it in the corner. Good try. Yeah, fine try. I don't think I've, I've ever seen a back row forward have the ball in his hands as much as this man Finnegan has had tonight. Now he's used a lot in midfield by Australia to punch through, to get them over the gay line and to set up their attacks. A beautiful skill by uh, Johnny, and that deserved a try, just that little half a second to play from him. Jeremy Paul scoring, who started the first five tests of this season. Until the comeback by Phil Kearns. Not concerned at all by the flash photography. Forty-three points to three then to Australia. Having absorbed a little bit of a battering from Romania in the last ten minutes or so. 
and they've stormed up the field and scored yet another try. Australia making.